Myth number six, only wealthy people need estate plans. Well, definitely wealthy people need estate plans, but not only wealthy people. Do you remember when I was talking to you about wills with asset protection so that you can protect money for the surviving spouse if you're the first spouse to pass? You know, let's say you have a million dollar estate. Let's say you have a 600,000 estate. Let's say you have a 400,000, a 200,000. It is so important that you protect money for your spouse so that your spouse won't be left impoverished, so that your spouse won't run out of money when you're gone. It's in a way more important for those folks who have, I'll call it modest estate, modest means below the 2 million Washington level, to protect money for your spouse, to pr protect money for your kids, to have an estate plan. Because without having the right estate plan, there is a possibility, a good possibility, depending on the size of the assets and the income and the care, that they are gonna go broke. And when they go broke, they'll go on Medicaid and everything will be gone. That doesn't have to happen. And I hope it doesn't happen in your situation. And it's an elder law attorney who understands Medicaid, Medicaid strategies will have as a part of their estate planning guidance and recommendations to you, a way to protect assets for your spouse, for your kids, for your loved ones. I've been talking about what happens when you die. That is not all that an estate plan is. An estate plan encompasses not just the, either the will or the trust or the transfer on death deeds, et cetera. It encompasses what I call living documents, which documents I believe are much more important your living documents are those legal documents that protect you while you are alive. And those include your durable powers of attorney for finances, your durable power of attorney for health medical decisions, and thirdly, your healthcare directive that's also called a living will. Why are these documents so important? Well, First of all, none of us ever want to think about the fact that we won't be in charge of our own life, of our own affairs. But reality is, and I'm sure many of you have experienced this in your family or with your loved ones, that there is cognitive decline that often happens with aging, being, be it you know, Alzheimer's or some other form of dementia there are accidents that happen to much younger people um car accidents there's strokes you know i mean this is probably why people and thank you for being here and listening this is probably why people don't even want to talk about it is that when you're thinking about an estate plan you're thinking about some really serious things like what happens if i become incapacitated who's going to take care i'm not dad but i'm incapacitated who's going to manage my affairs Who's gonna pay the bills? Who's gonna to talk to my doctors when I can't talk to them? The durable powers of attorney, these living documents are the documents that safeguard your wishes. Through these documents, you appoint someone you trust, who knows you, who will do right by you. And you have appointed them to be what's called your attorney in fact. You often hear it referred to as an agent, like a healthcare agent or a financial agent, or maybe, you know, commonly they're called a POA, power of attorney. That means somebody who has been appointed under your durable power of attorney documents to act on your behalf. Now, if you don't have those documents and if something happens to you that you no longer can manage your own affairs, what happens? the state steps in the state will appoint a guardian or a conservator to manage your financial affairs to talk to your doctors that could be somebody you know it could be your spouse for example if you lose capacity if you lose capacity your spouse has no legal right to manage your financial affairs that's a huge surprise for people if your spouse loses capacity, maybe the court will appoint you as the guardian, but everything you do is subject to the 
report saying, yes, you can do it or no, you can't. You have to get financial reports every year, a personal care plan every year. If you wanna sell your house, your name's on it. So is your spouse. Your spouse is incapacitated. The court has to tell you, you legally can sell your own house. This comes as a really unpleasant surprise for people. So how do you avoid that situation? How do you avoid court being involved in managing your business through a guardian or at least um, you know, the oversight of the guardian and all the costs that come with that? Durable powers of attorney. That's what you need to do. These durable powers of attorney ensure that if something happens to you, if something happens to your spouse, that, you know, if it's your spouse, your spouse will likely give you the authority so that you can manage affairs. If it's not the spouse, oftentimes it's the adult children. If it's not the adult children, it could be a, a number of people. As long as you trust and you appoint them, they'll make sure that your affairs are, <clears throat> excuse me, managed and that the court has nothing to do with your business, with your life. That's why it's so important and so often overlooked. You know, here at um, ELG Estate Planning at Elder Law Group, we do Medicaid asset preservation strategies. What that is, is that we help people preserve assets when they apply for Medicaid so they don't have to spend down all their money. If we don't have a good durable power of attorney in place, our hands are tied. There's sometimes there are great strategies that exist that we would love to put into place to protect money, but we can't do it. Why? Either because usually it's because the durable power of attorney was drafted either a long time ago or by somebody who did it online for themselves, or oftentimes it's by an estate planning lawyer so the person did the right thing. They went to an estate planning lawyer, but they didn't go to one that had elder law expertise. And without the elder law expertise, all of these types of authority that we want to see in a financial power of attorney simply aren't there because the estate planning lawyer, not knowing Medicaid, not knowing elder law, didn't realize it should be included. So it's really important that you seek out the services of an estate planning lawyer, but one who has the elder law experience uh, to make sure that you've got the right durable powers of attorney, the right estate plan. Uh, the one other living document I haven't spent much time talking about is what's called a um, living will or a healthcare directive. That is the document where you put in writing that if the doctor says, that you are at end of life in a permanent vegetative condition or terminal condition and medical treatment is not going to uh, help you recover um, but it may prolong your life it's up to you to say do you want that do you want heroic measures or would you rather be allowed to pass peacefully without pain whatever your decision is it, it will be right for you put it in writing and having that in writing also helps alleviate the guilt that your healthcare agent might have if they are actually saying to the doctor, let's go ahead and remove um, that, those machines that are keeping my loved one alive because that's not what they want. So those are the three documents, durable power of attorney for finance, durable power of attorney for healthcare, and your healthcare directive, also known as a living will. Now, Sometimes the durable powers of attorney are combined into one document, that's fine. There's no problem with that, as long as they have the necessary authority in that, that you grant to your agent. Here at ELG Estate Planning, we do have those as separate documents. The reason for that, there's multiple reasons. Sometimes people want a different decision maker for finances and a different decision maker for their health. Okay, much easier to put it in a separate document. Um, another reason is that ours are, are quite comprehensive and that means that they're lengthy and for those reasons, we want to have those separate. And another reason is, you know what, your banker doesn't need to see what you put in your healthcare power of attorney and your doctor doesn't need to see what you put in your financial power of attorney. So we, act, we draft ours separately, but 
that doesn't mean that a combined power of attorney document isn't okay. It certainly can be.